hey guys, you want to see something neat? Come up, come over here. We today are going to take a look at feather duster worms on our inaugural episode of WTF or What's That Fish? Yes, this isn't a fish, but we're going to be looking at a wide variety of aquatic life. And today we have the feather duster worm. So you may have seen these around. They are uh, most obviously recognized by their twin sets of feathery branches that stick out and wave in the current like little flowers. They're pretty cool. They are uh, all over the Caribbean as well as the Pacific Oceans. They tend to live basically exactly at recreational scuba diver depths, everything from as shallow as basically any water at all, a meter of water, all the way down to 35 meters or 115 feet. These are also sometimes known as fan worms or tube worms, that latter name coming from the fact that they build themselves a little tube, and you can see it right there, and that's what they live in. That's not the worm itself, that's a structure that it builds. It secretes a mucus from its body, and it uses it to basically stick together particles of sand and other non-organic debris to build itself a little hard shell that it can retreat into. So it's a filter feeder, and all of those fronds waving around are actually filtering food particles out of the water column. They, uh, the particles that are grabbed migrate down those sort of feathery tentacles. Technically uh, those are called radioli, and they end up in the worm's mouth where they're either eaten or if they're not edible they're used to make some more of that protective tube. So you've probably seen these uh, these feather fronds waving around in the current. They like areas that have a lot of water flow uh, and areas that have a lot of stuff, sediment in the water, things that they can filter out and eat. And then as a protective measure, they can pull those fronds in. They actually have light sensitive cells on the ends of the fronds. And when they detect something potentially dangerous, like me poking at them here in slow motion, they retract that frond assembly in into their tube for protection. So they're really quick to pull those fronds in. You, here's another view doing it without slowing the camera down. It's uh, I think a lot of people think that they are disturbed by movement in the water column, and that's not actually the case. These guys really prefer movement in the water column because it brings them more food and more building materials. It's actually these light sensitive cells, you can't really call them eyes because they don't give actual vision, they just give an indication of light or dark, and they give the worm an idea when it might potentially be in danger, which will lead it to suck itself into its tube for protection. It can take a while to come back out. I have actually not seen one of these guys extend its fronds back out. The level of really intricate detail on those fronds is, is very cool to take a look at. If you can get close without frightening one of them, uh, just really cool. It's also neat that they are not poisonous, not venomous, they don't bite. Uh, as a diver you really don't have to worry about them whatsoever, which is sometimes a little bit unusual for sea life. So they do come in a variety of colors. You'll find browns, pinks, and oranges depending on where exactly you're seeing them. They sometimes will grow more or less individually. There are also some subspecies that prefer to basically form colonies, where you'll see a whole bunch of them all growing together. There are in fact a whole smorgasbord of different subtypes and, and genus of these sorts of feather duster worms. And in fact here is a slightly different species in front of me. You can see it's coloration is a little different and it has a lot more fronds. The, the typical ones we were looking at have 18 to 28 fronds in two, uh, two sort of sets, uh, two layers. This has a whole bunch more, but it's the same basic sort of animal. I think it's worth pointing out that these are a totally different creature than what you commonly call Christmas tree worms, which have a very much a spiral sort of structure to their fronds. It's kind of similar, uh, similar concept, but spiral fronds 
usually uh, much brighter colors and much smaller. These guys can get up to three or four inches in diameter. The Christmas tree worms are much, much smaller. And they're actually, they're a different animal. One of the structural differences is the Christmas tree worms typically actually have a lid that they can close over the end of their, their tube home, where the feather dusters do not. You can see that when these guys close, the, the tube remains open and they're protected just by hiding down inside it. So lifespan of these guys is several years, three to four to five years. They're out there looking pretty awesome on the sea floor. Hopefully now when you see them, when you're out diving, you'll have a little bit better appreciation of them. Scuba diving is fun and adventure for young and old, but it can be dangerous. So know the sport well and don't take any chances. I'm Ian. I'll be back with you next week for another exciting deep dive.